Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at solving quadratic equations by substitution. They are a little bit tricky, around about grade 8 GCSE. Uh, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solution. If you do need any help, please do add a comment below in the comments. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this video we're going to look at solving these two equations by substitution. Okay, so what we've got here is um, actually this is the equation of a circle and this is the equation of a straight line. So effectively, if I just kind of sketch this out, um, what you can imagine is you've got a circle with a centre 0, 0. Now don't forget this 18 is the equivalent of r squared or the radius squared. So very roughly, it means then that the radius of this circle is going to be 4 because the square root of 6. 16 is 4 so it's probably like 4.2 and that's perfectly fine this is only a bit of a sketch it's also got a straight line now the straight line is going to be y equals 2x plus 3 so all I've done here is I've made y the subject by taking this minus 2x over to the other side 2 is the gradient and plus 3 is going to be the y-intercept. So effectively what I've got is a line that goes through something like that. Okay, so this would be y equals 2x plus 3 and this circle would be the equation of the circle. And what we're looking to do is to actually figure out these points that the line and the circle intersect at. OK, now the way we're going to do that is by using substitution. So I'm going to write x squared plus y squared equals 18. And then rather than writing y, I'm now going to use this value, 2x plus 3, because then it means that if I write that, I've only got x's in the equation, which means that all I need to do <laughs> is solve it for x, OK? But... I'm feeling OK about it because the question actually is solve, which gives you maybe hopefully a little bit of a clue that it's going to be solving by factorising. I do see these where it says solve, giving your answer to a couple of decimal places. And that means really use a quadratic formula or completing the square or something like that. But hopefully we'll be able to get away with just factorising this. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared plus. 2x plus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 3, and that equals 18. OK, so let's expand those brackets. So x squared plus 4x squared, and that's going to be 6x plus 6x is going to be plus 12x plus 9 equals 18. Now, in order to factorise uh, or use quadratic form or any of these, um, we need to get this equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is bring this across together. So that will be 5x squared plus 12x. And I've got plus 9 minus 18 from both sides. That's going to be minus 9 equals zero. And then it really is just a case of factorising that. Now, there are a couple of different techniques. The one I'm going to use is I'm going to say, well, actually, 5 times minus 9 is minus 45. OK, so I want two numbers that when I multiply them together, make minus 45. And when I add them together, make plus 12. So those two numbers are going to be 15 and minus 3. OK, now you might do this slightly differently to me. This is the way I've, I, I learn how to do it. It's the way I prefer. It kind of makes sense in my own head. But what I would do is I would then write this out slightly differently as 5x squared plus 15x minus 3x minus 9 equals 0. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to factorise these two terms and then factorise these two terms. So this is no different to this because 15x minus 3x is still plus 12x. But if I factorise the first two terms for 5x, I'm going to get x plus 3. And if I factorise the second two terms for minus 3, 
guess what? I'm going to get x plus 3, okay? So what it means then is I've got two common terms. Both of them are x plus 3. So I can say, actually, I can rewrite that as 5x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0. OK, so hopefully you're OK with that. As I say, you might have slightly different ways of doing these things. But essentially what we want to do is get the two values of x. So if we go back to our picture, it's this value of x here and also this value of x here. We go along the corridor and up the stairs, along to x and along to x. OK, so if I then look at this, uh, put my finger over there, x plus 3 equals 0, so therefore x equals minus 3. And 5x minus 3, well, x equals, or 5x equals 3, so therefore x must equal 3 over 5. And we're going to use those two values and substitute them back into our original equation. OK, so it's just much easier for us to do that and say, well, actually, when x equals 3 fifths, y is going to equal 2x plus 3. So that's going to equal 2 times 3 over 5 plus 3. OK, well, 2 times 3 over 5 is 6 over 5. Plus three. OK, now um, this is where <laughs> we might all slightly differ. Some people do these as um, decimals. Some people do these as fractions. It doesn't really matter how you kind of work it out. What you should get is y equals four and a half, is it? No, four and a fifth, sorry, um, or 4.2. Doesn't really matter which one. When x equals three fifths, y equals 4 and 1 fifth, or when x equals 0 0.6, y equals 4.2, because this is 0 0.6. So it doesn't really matter how you do it, whether you do it as a decimal or a fraction. I would suggest, personally, I would tend to use fractions, but it doesn't matter. OK, so let's have a look at what happens when x equals minus 3. Well, again, I'm going to do y equals 2x plus 3. So that's going to be 2 times minus 3 plus 3. Well, that's going to be minus 6 um, plus 3 is going to give us y equals minus 3. OK, so this one is going to be um, x equals minus 3, y equals minus 3. OK, so let's have a look at what that looks like on our particular sketch. Well, what it means is that this particular point here is going to be 0 0.6 and 4.2. OK, so not a bad sketch, 0.6 and 4.2, or if you prefer, 3 fifths and 4 and 1 fifth. And this particular point over here, which is not as good, a, uh, I think my, my circle's not quite right, but this would be minus 3, minus 3. OK, so uh, just for the sake of clarity, I could write this down as something like 3 fifths and 4 and 1 fifth, or if you prefer 0 0.6 and 4.2, and then this one would be minus 3, minus 3. OK, I hope that's been useful for you. It's quite a, a tricky video. It does take a little bit of time to work through these sorts of questions. But there is another example uh, following on from this video and the rest of this playlist. Please do. Stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, and then compare your solutions. Also, if you're not sure, uh, please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. And if you like the video, really appreciate a like as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.